Art Chat is made possible by the support of the Artistics Harmonies Association. Create your next aha experience with us. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Chat. I'm your host, Linda Riesenberg Fissler. And today we have our co founder and business partner in Artistic Harmonies, John Anderson. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm doing I'm well. Glad, I'm glad to be here because I wasn't sure that I could make it with all my technical uh, abilities, <laughs> but glad to be here and uh, this is always this is always a thrill for me to do this even though I'm new at it. Yeah that's okay we'll we'll make you an expert by the time we get done with this series I'm sure so <laughs> yeah so so today what we're going to be talking about is managing your art business. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more but let's do some quick house cleaning. Um, well, I wanted to welcome Deborah, Gail, and Adele, just a few of the members who have joined us at Artistic Harmonies Association. Um, wanted to tell all of you fine listeners that uh, we have a little special going on. If you subscribe to our newsletter or if you subscribe to my personal newsletter, personal in being my art and writing newsletter, you can save 50% on the membership. Um, so hop on over there, subscribe to the newsletter. I'll get a notice that you have subscribed and I'll send you what the coupon code is for you to use when you register for our website, um, the private side, the membership side of our website. Also wanted to say, if you haven't had a chance to listen or to read our honorary member, Gene Peterson's art chat and article, head over to the artistic harmonies, ASSOC.com website and check it out. Our next member that we will be uh, introducing, although I don't think he needs much of an introduction to folks who um, have been with me for a long time, but uh, will be Jamie Markle, and we'll be pulling stuff together for the blog on that. Um, I also reached out to Jamie and asked him if he wanted to do an art chat because we haven't heard from Jamie in a while, and I want to see what he's up to. So actually, I know what he's up to, but you probably don't out there in my listener land. So uh, again, this is the first in a series of 10 episodes where my co-founder and business partner, John Anderson, who is also known on social media as Art Branson, and we covered that in a previous art chat uh, where he told us about Lloyd Branson, who is an artist, a master artist in um, the Tennessee area. So these art chats, though, are going to be pretty different. These are going to uh, cover business, the business side of art. So um We'll get into more of a discussion with that. John, why don't you, when I, while I get the screen all set up, why don't you go ahead and start talking about um, what this series is going to be about? Okay. Uh, I think one of the important things to realize is that this first episode, as I call it, is to let the listeners and the members and other people who are just curious about artistic harmonies uh, to know a little bit about what, what we're going to be doing online in the series as it points to an art business. Uh, I, it, I t entitled it AHA Moments of Managing an Art Business because what I have found over the years and what uh, Linda has explained to me that a lot of artists, uh, very talented artists and those that are just starting out really want to take their talents and creativity uh, to the next level. And so we're going to we're going to offer that through the business art platform. So the, this first episode is going to be to tell you what's coming up in the next nine episodes. Uh, I do want to say before we get into that, that uh, I hope you will visit our website. Uh, Linda and I get together quite frequently and we discuss the different pages and benefits and the content and it's not totally done yet but we expect it to evolve. Uh, as a non-member you have the opportunity to listen to podcasts and read the blog posts and follow the spotlights of our new members and leaders within the industry especially our honorary members. There's a lot of well-known people in there that are supporting us from the standpoint of being an honorary member and will continue to work with us in the future. 
So we hope to uh, continue to provide, uh, provide insights to artists and creatives and introduce everyone to business opportunities and methods for amplifying interest in their own art business. Linda, I know I'm leaving out a ton of stuff. What am I missing? Well, I want to back up just a, a little bit here and, and say that the art, where we're different from other organizations that are out there um, that are very, very much art focused um, on the art skills, we're a bit different. We're going to focus on business skills and we are going to go um, our, with our focus on business skills, there will be some art skills, like self-study courses and other courses available for like stretching your skills. But our, our focus is going to be more on helping creatives, and I say creatives for a reason, run their business and be successful in their businesses. We're going to make them entrepreneurs, having said that, over the next 10 episodes or more. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not going to take 10 episodes and all of a sudden you can say, I'm an entrepreneur. It doesn't work that way. But um, that's, I just really wanted to clearly state how we're going to be different. And while I may be talking with artists on art chat, that too will end up taking a, well, tell us a little bit about your business side. And we'll get into the reason why we decided to be more business focused um, in the coming up you know, during this episode. Um, the other things that I just want to touch on, uh, if you become a private member on the site or become a member, join a membership on our site, you'll have access to a private blog that'll have more detailed information uh, about whatever the blog is going to be talking about, particularly business. Um, and then you have private invitations to events. There may be times when John and I decide that we want to cover something um, that will later become a lesson that we may decide to open up to a Zoom audience and uh, have, you know, and record, and you all could be sitting in and listening to that. Um, we have, again, self-study courses. We'll also have courses for the member plus level uh, that actually will have more interaction with John and I and, and hopefully some of our honorary members who want to step up and join us with that. Um, we have a thing called quick clips and what that is and it's a tongue twister I don't know why I did that because I think I stumble over it more now than I did <laughs> when I said oh that's a cool thing in my head uh, but those are just real quick 10 15 20 minute videos that talk about you know different strategies for business different strategies for stretching your art skills and techniques um, and then we have ad-free social media so if you look at the current social media um, not going to name names. We all know who the biggies are. Uh, but if you usually when you're going through your news feed, you see an ad maybe after you know one or two posts. And it's really getting annoying because I think I was on um, a certain one yesterday, just scrolling through my news feed, seeing what my friends were up to. And I think I saw a total of 20 ads in the five minutes that I was there. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. And you won't have that on our website. And as far as I'm concerned, um, and you won't have any of the politics because that's banned. <laughs> and you won't have any ads about politics because that's banned. <laughs> but it'll be where creatives gather and talk about their creative life, their work. They'll share their work. They'll um, talk about their journeys. Uh, you know, anything we have very general rules, it just has to be, you know, creative and positive. And, um, you know, you can, I mean, if you want to open a group, you're, you'll be able to, to create your own groups in that, um, send private messages in that. So um, it, it's really, I'm really excited about it because I'm looking forward to talking with a lot of my artist friends and my writing friends and my movie producing friends <laughs> and, and have them talk about their work and their life and, and provide some inspiration for all of us. So, um, and, the, and the reason why that that is a closed forum and that you have to pay the membership is because it is ad free. I mean, honestly, that's how the other social media platforms make their money. money. They're, um, they're, they're basically publicly, publicly owned companies um, and they have to make money and we all have to make money to survive. So 
that's um, that's the other benefits of becoming a membership. And there's two of them that are out there, basic and plus. And the main difference is a VIP status for plus members that will allow you to see on-demand videos. So if John and I create a video or, or the honorary members with John and I create a video, um, you as a basic member will have the opportunity to sit in live on some of those. If you miss it live, there's no on-demand video for you. Um, if you're a plus member, you will be able to either watch it live or on demand on your time. So I could go on forever about this, John, but <laughs> <laughs> this is about us and, and specifically business. So um, why don't you kick us off with a, a little bit about uh, the background of, of how we got here and um, you know, yes. a, little, a little bit about aha moments. Yeah, you know, uh, first, first of all, Linda does a great job at explaining not only where we are, but where we're going. And, and that's very important. And what I've learned from Linda is that whatever choices you make, whether you just visit the website and take the minimal offerings or whether you decide to go ahead and, and be involved in, on different membership levels, uh, and uh, whatever choices that you decide that you make, in whatever moment that you're in, uh, you should push the edges. Linda has always told me that, and what we're finding out that this is, I hate to use this word, but this is a journey. This is something that started last year. We've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go, and we'd really love uh, to have you join us in that. Uh, the other thing is, is that we... A lot of things that Linda and I talk about is uh, traditional expectations uh, of the current art world. In, in this 21st century, things are going to change and we're going to help change those things. Adding business to art is just one portion of it. We're going to really drill down and see some new things that we're going to offer you in terms of uh, uh, expanding your business and learning more about ways to privately get more money out of your art, and so on and so on. And like Linda, I could go on forever. Uh, but Linda, we talk about stagnant markets. Why don't you expound a little bit on that? Yeah, when I had done the art chat with Gene, we got into a conversation um, that really ended up finishing in the green room. But, um, you know, I may have said a, 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 a point in that art chat that I know John and I really identify with, and that is that the current art world, the art market that's out there is really a stagnant market. If you think about it, it hasn't changed since the 17 and 1800s. So you created art, then you bartered a price on your art. In some cases that was food for family. And in other cases it wasn't. You searched for a patron who was wealthy, who loved your art and wanted to pay you to continue to create your art. And then you got into galleries, you showed through galleries, and that's where you help to subside, you know, to, to provide money for the gallery to stay open. They take a, a portion. Um, a big chunk. <laughs> well, you know, I can't I can't speak for 18 and 17 hundreds how much that chunk was, but but typically that person was also a patron of one of the artists. So I really don't know. I haven't really gone back and, and looked at history to see what kind of um, uh, relationships were built with them. I, I assume, I mean, there's always the bad side of me, the dark side of me that says that they kept them hungry because if they weren't hungry, they wouldn't be painting, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know that for sure. That, but, but if you look at it, we are doing the same exact things that every artist from the 18th and 17th century has done. We, we look for those wealthy patrons who keep buying our art, we put our art in galleries. We think of it as our art and not really a commodity, which is, I know, a bad word. People are like, oh no, commodity, I'm gonna be traded on the web or on the stock exchange. No, your art's not gonna be traded in a stock exchange, although I challenge you to say, why couldn't it be? Um, and then there's the other side of this where you have the auction houses who are also in the game for things that a lot of us get offended at um, because we don't really think it's art. 
so you have this high end where they take advantage again of the artist, you know, by putting a, dare I say, duct taped banana to a canvas. <laughs> and, and then that takes a couple million dollars. And really, you know, we become uninspired by seeing that. It's like, why do I even try? Right. But, you know, there's something in between all of that where we should be able to control our destinies how much our art is worth and valued. And we should be thinking of it more as a product or a commodity than we should be thinking of it of this is the way it's always been done. So we're challenging ourselves in this association to ask the question, why is it always done that way? And why do we continue to do it that way? And how can we build bridges that will allow us to reach out and start to bring the art world out of this stagnant market of um, the bartering and the so much big chunk coming out of a sale through a gallery. We want to empower the creatives, the artists, the writers, the, the creative folks. And um, just one little side note before I, I go back over to John so he can talk some more about this. Um, this website isn't just for visual artists. This association isn't just for visual artists. So a lot of my friends that are artists do more than one thing. I write books, novels. I do business. I paint. I negotiate my art prices. I have a great partner in John who's going to help me get more confidence around <laughs> selling my art. And, um, and so... You know, we have movie producers, and if we think about the movie industry, the product, the commodity is the film itself. So you have all these people creating this creative product, and at the end, they have a set price for when it first comes out, and then three, three to six months later, the price drops a little bit. Eight months later, it drops a little bit more. Two years from now, it's at probably its lowest price. So the person that's going to look at that movie or purchase that movie is saying, is it worth $20 for me to watch this in my home? Is it worth, I don't know, I haven't gone to a movie in so long, $17 or $20 in a movie house? Um, you know, so the power is held by that production company and the distribution company that decides what price point that's going to come out to to the market okay so but the producers in that negotiation still have a lot of power and it's the same with writers you know their self -pub self publishing blew up that market before that it was your book didn't get published unless you were in a publish house in a, in a publishing company in the art world you don't get noticed unless you're in a gallery and that gallery promotes you. And that's a big if, if that gallery promotes you, okay? So again, let's look at the other creative arts that are out there and see what they're doing right. And how can we reapply that and change the art market from being stagnant to being a lot more vibrant? I'm off my soapbox <laughs> now. <laughs> well, one thing that uh, Linda, Linda and I do a lot of this talking with each other and and we when do. we come, yeah, when we come <laughs> up with with ideas, that's where we got uh, these are aha moments. And but I think that we've agreed that she and I are going to move in a direction that is going to be different. So we're going to strive to differentiate uh, into this 21st century, and that's going to be some disruptive technologies, some new ways of doing things in art distribution, selling your paint, uh, your paintings, et cetera, and be involved with all the other different uh, uh, aspects or genres of, of art as an industry. Uh, but mo most of all, too, we want to create opportunities for good where everything connects in harmony. So I think you'll find when we're ramped up and going strong that uh, you're going to be able to, you may be able to get into a discussion with a movie director, or you may be able to get in a discussion with a sculptor, a photographer, a writer, and all these things are going to inspire you to take your chosen passion and move it forward. 
Uh, so the what we're looking to do is to give the best possible advantage to individuals or groups that want to start an art business. We want to change or reorganize their current art business model and help them grow uh, successfully. And we're going to do that by using disruptive innovation and specific strategies. From the business side, I've got an extensive list of business topics that we'll drill, drill down into uh, where the business becomes an art. So uh, that, that's why I'm going to go over next the, the various uh, parts of these episodes. Um, let's see. I think it's fair to ask that uh, how are we going to do this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. How are we going to assist everyone? Well, a lot of this is, as you know, being a creative is self-taught. You take your aha moments and you, you expand on those and you hope you've picked correctly. But if you do fail in a particular task or effort, you've learned something and you pick it up and move on. Well, what we're going to do is offer what I call touch points to where you can uh, give, receive information and knowledge. And we'll, those touch points will help you in developing your approach to business that you have in mind. And, and it may not be, say, for instance, I'm going to open a studio, I'm going to paint some of my paintings. It could be anything uh, from framing to podcasting of art, uh, just anything that you really feel like you, like you can do. One thing I'm going to try to do is draw in uh, steets, and that's, that's people that love art but really don't know why except for the emotional aspect. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's going to fall into both the business and the, uh, uh, the other side of this, this uh, program that we're putting together. I think uh, I was going to ask Linda what types of business-centric topics that she she was going to cover, but if it's all right with her, I'm going to move into the next uh, episodes just to kind of explain those briefly as to what's going on. So yeah. is that all right with you, or do you have some specific business-centric topics you want to cover? Right. So just one comment before we drop off to that, and I'll try and make it shorter than my last comments. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I just want to, like John mentioned the estates, and what we're talking about on that is um, we also don't want to be just for creatives. We also want to start educating people to really see the different arts. And um, more since I'm a visual artist and a writer, that, those are the two disciplines we will look at, but we will also start um, talking with our movie producing friends and directors and screenwriters that we have as part of the group as well to say, we need you to come back and talk to us about this so that we can create those quote unquote touch points, which is a very business word. And what that business word means is basically that you can come in and find inspiration that that's hardcore information um, teaching you a specific uh, scenario or business approach or uh, creative approach uh, to something that you maybe not had. So that's the definition of the business touch point, basically. So, but we don't want to just touch point people, entrepreneurs that are creating. We want to touch point collectors as well, um, viewers, whatever that audience is so that you can help to start build what is referred to in the writing world as a platform. And that's a group of people who love what you're doing and will follow you anywhere. Okay. And we'll drink this as, it, as in the American president and we'll drink the sand because you tell them to drink the sand. <laughs> okay. So that's one of my favorite lines from that movie. Okay. So yeah. So John, how are we going to cover these um, topics and, and where do we start? Okay, I'm going to briefly go over this. As some of you are aware, and some of you are very confident in, in running an art business without any help, but business is complicated. A lot of people think they know how business operates, but it, there are some uh, intricacies in there when it comes to compliance and uh, everything that's involved with starting and running a business successfully. So we're going we're gonna to take this and give you some opportunities to learn what I call the back office of business uh, in setting up, organizing, and, and running your business. Uh, 
over the over the next what what I call ten episodes, but it'll actually be nine after this. We're we're going to start with what matters most, and, and I'm very particular about this in that what matters most is you. You know, you're the only ones that can answer questions about where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to do it. And so we want to lend the ear uh, to offer suggestions that, or if you're stuck on something and you're saying, geez, what do I do next? We want to be that source for you. But it definitely begins with you. So that'll be the next episode, centering on what matters most, and that's you. Uh, the, the episode after that will be knowing and understanding yourself. Starting a business uh, entails understanding and dealing with a lot of issues, legal, financing, sales and marketing, intellectual property right protections, liability protection. Yeah, I can go on and on. Uh, I'm sure there's an, there are encyclopedias out there that cover all those elements. Uh, but entrepreneurs f are frequently fail. I think the the success rate is somewhere around uh, twenty to thirty uh, percent. And but we appreciate the amount of time, resources, and energies that are needed to start and grow a business. And episode four, it's about your core values. Many of us uh, struggle with finding direction, making big decisions and even knowing how to act in day-to-day -day situations. When you take the time to consider your core values, these things become crystal clear. Here's a big question, and that, this is gonna be an episode five. Uh, what do you want out of art? You know, I understand, and, and, and Linda has told me that Essentially, you want to be able to make a living off of this, or at least uh, the majority of people do. They want to be able to enjoy what they're doing. Uh, they want to be able to improve their life, lifestyle and work balance. And uh, so those are just a couple things that are the intrinsic value of being involved in your own art business and finding out what it is you really have a passion to pursue. And again, I'll elaborate on these in detail and, and give you the opportunity that if you have a specific question or two that you want to ask me, that I'll make myself available for that. Uh, going back to the economic side of art, the next episode is, go is going to be talking about knowing your value and the value of your art. You want to know how to price your work and how to sell your, your art and your services. Before doing any of that, though, you need to know the value of your art. Uh, and, and again, what I'm saying there is, what does that piece of artwork that you've done, what does it project uh, from a systemic value, from a uh, intrinsic value, from an extrinsic value, from a resonant value, because all of these things really lay claim to what you can get for your artwork. And so we're gonna talk about that as well and what your personal value is. What would you pay yourself if somebody came in and said, okay, I'm gonna be your patron. How much are you gonna take per hour to develop a painting, a movie, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I'm gonna to explain to you how that value comes about. In the eighth episode, we're getting close folks, just hang in there. Uh, managing your commitments to align with your priorities. That's pretty self-explanatory. You, you have to know how to manage not only your art business, but what's, what priorities come first. Well, obviously that varies from individual to individual, but I, I don't think I'm out of line saying you have priorities to your family. Uh, maybe you've got a job now to your work and you have to squeeze everything in to your schedule uh, to coincide with that. After we've gone through a lot of this stuff, we're gonna reflect on your progress and that's gonna be in episode nine. I'm gonna teach you, uh, teach you or actually talk with you about uh, when you reflect on things, you, you don't wanna worry about what could go wrong. Instead, you wanna focus on your accomplishments and ways to improve. 
And finally, we're going to look at the best way that you can develop yourself to accept the challenges and stay consistent in your art business. And your art business will change. I always laugh when I, I, I shouldn't say this because I may have a client listening, but I always laugh when a client comes to me and says, um, I need a business plan. And they write the business plan. And the first thing they do is put it on a shelf and never look at it again. So we're going to talk about those challenges of dealing with shifts in your business, et cetera. Um, okay. okay. Um, you I missed you... episode seven. Oh, I did? Yeah. You went from six to eight. Unless, okay. you, unless you folded it in there and I missed it. But the priority no. is your timeline. I missed it. And okay. So and wait? next in episode seven, we're going to talk about your priorities and your timeline. You really do need to develop a timeline to find out where you're starting from and where you want to be in a given amount of time. And as you'll see later, we'll assess your progress on that to, to see if you're hitting your mark. So there's, there were, there's so, 10 episodes that we're going to do over the course of a couple months, um, right. recording in the first week and the uh, third week of the month. Right. And, um, and unless something comes up that we need to deal with. And yeah. of course, we will let our, our members know. Um, and then, so, you know, if you are aligned with us and, or you're frustrated with the way things are, and you want the opportunities that we're talking about here, that you can start to, um, no matter where you are in your art business, become more entrepreneurial entrepreneurial <laughs> is that a word <laughs> and, and um and what you're doing and, and just kind of shake things up a little bit that's kind of i'm gonna have to get a t-shirt or something that says we're gonna shake things up because that's kind of <laughs> i keep saying that and um yeah. but we mean we mean it i mean you you all are not privy to john and our my phone calls i mean we it, it's amazing we, we get on zoom and then we just kind of start talking and the next thing you know it's you know two hours later and it's like oh <laughs> okay what are we going to do now <laughs> so so there's yeah. a lot of things that get revisited there's a lot of times when john says to me stick with me you know because i i some of you may be sitting out there saying yeah yeah right i've heard all this before yeah you may have um or you may not and you may think that we're like dreaming um we're not promising this like you're going to join and the next day you're going to be creative and passionate. You know, yeah, we hope that happens, but it may take a little while to build that journey. Again, it's a journey. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. So um, while we're creating this, though, you have the opportunity to be a part of it and to lend your voice to what is working for you, what isn't working for you, and helping us basically push the envelope to make sure that we adjust what we need to adjust for this to to work for everybody. So John? Okay. I think in closing, I think I want you to, to realize, and I know you that you do, that every day comes with wins and losses. Of course, the wins help you build uh, the periods of time that make up your positive experiences. And the losses, well, they provide lessons to be learned at the expense of your most valuable asset, and that's time. Overall, your innovative nature is the energy that keeps your drive alive. This, this comes to focus to me in the legend of the dragon, and this remains my mantra every day, and I'm going to quote it here. The dragon embodies the power, beauty, and mystery of your own inner forces that shape and interact with your world. There is an opportunity inherent in every attempt and failure. There is a chance to turn all experiences into positive lessons. There are lessons to be learned, in effect, to ride the dragon instead of being devoured by it. So I look at that every day to say, don't get sidetracked, John. You know, you don't want to be devoured by the dragon. You want to get on that puppy and right. So I leave that with you today. And I thank you for your time and hope you'll join us the week of February 21st for episode two and continue to go to the website because we add uh, new things as, as we're moving through the week. And Linda? 
Yes. So thanks for being on, introducing us to what we're going to be talking about over the next 10 episodes or nine episodes. Uh, we hope you all will join us in doing that. Um, if you have any questions, there's a contact us page on the website. And again, that website is artisticharmoniesassoc.com. You can go to the contact us page and um, send us some questions. If you have any that you, that you want to ask us, especially after this episode, we would love to hear from you. And don't forget that um, if you join our newsletter, I will send you the code coupon code for the 50% off if you want to join us in our journey. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. So the third week of February, we'll have another art chat with John uh, to talk about centering on what matters most to you. So thanks, John. Thanks for being with okay. us. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you. you know. Yeah. Talk to you all later. Bye. Bye. -bye. Art Chat is made possible by the support of the Artistics Harmonies Association. Create your next aha experience with us.